GPS families, we are so excited to share with you another read aloud. This week's story is Trombone Shorty by Troy Trombone Shorty Andrews and illustrated by Brian Collier. As you listen to this text, we will stop at times and ask you to think about what is happening. After you finish listening to the story, first, we will share some questions with you to think and talk about. Then you will see a writing prompt. You can use this writing prompt to respond to the text. You can then share your written response with your teacher. Finally, you will see some project ideas for enrichment and ways to have fun interacting with books. Enjoy. This story is a nonfiction text, specifically an autobiography. An autobiography is a story that an author wrote about his or her own life. The title of this story is Trombone Shorty by Troy Trombone Shorty Andrews. Trombone Shorty is actually Troy Andrews' nickname. So as you listen to the story, think about how he got this nickname. When you read an autobiography, I know as a reader, this is going to be a true story about a person's life. The author is going to share events in chronological order or in sequence, beginning, middle, and end. So it is really important that I listen for those important events and happenings in the life of Trombone Shorty. I do know that Trombone Shorty started playing the trombone and a musical instrument at a very young age. Music was a very important part of his life. I want you right now to think about how music can make you feel different emotions. Music can sometimes make us feel happy or sad or scared. So by remembering how music is important to you and makes you feel will also help you better understand the story and make connections to Trombone Shorty. Trombone Shorty worked hard to make his dream of becoming a musician come true. Listen for the important events in the story and how his relationships with other people also helped him to achieve his dream. Enjoy. Where yet? Where yet? We have our own way of living down here in New Orleans and our own way of talking too. And that's what we like to say when we want to tell a friend hello. So, where yet? Lots of kids have nicknames, but I want to tell you the story of how I got mine. Just like when you listen to your favorite song. Let's start at the beginning, because this is a story about music. But before you can understand how much music means to me, you have to know how important it is to my hometown, my greatest inspiration. I grew up in a neighborhood in New Orleans called Treme. Anytime of day or night, you can hear music floating in the air. And there was music in my house too. My big brother, James, played the trumpet so loud you could hear him halfway across town. He was the leader of his own band, and my friends and I would pretend to be in the band too. Follow me, James said. There's one time every year that's more exciting than any other. Mardi Gras. Parades fill the streets and beaded necklaces are thrown through the air to the crowd. I love the brass bands with their own trumpets, trombones, saxophones, and the biggest brass instrument of them all, the tuba, which rested over the musician's head like an elephant's trunk. Where yet? Where yet? The musicians would call. Readers, I notice that I am using the reading strategy of visualizing or making a movie in my mind. As I listen to the words on the pages, I can hear the music of the brass instruments and I can feel the drum beat in my heart. And this strategy of visualizing helps me to better remember and understand the story. All day long, I could see brass bands parade by my house while my neighbors danced along. I loved these parades during Mardi Gras because they made everyone forget about their troubles for a little while. People who didn't have a lot of money in Treme, but we always had a lot of mu music. I listened to all these sounds and mixed them together, just like how we make our food. 
would take one big pot and throw in sausage, crab, shrimp, chicken, vegetables, rice, whatever's in the kitchen, and stir it all together and let it cook. When it's done, it's the most delicious taste you've ever tried. We call it gumbo, and that's what I wanted my music to sound like. Different styles combined to create my own musical gumbo. But first, I needed an instrument. The great thing about music is that you don't even need a real instrument to play. So my friends and I decided to make our own. Now I notice I am using the strategy of asking questions. I am wondering what Trombone and his friends decided to use to make music. Were they using their voices? Were they using pots and pans or things they found outside? What would you use to make music? We might have sounded different from the real brass bands, but we felt like the greatest musicians of Treme. We were making music, and that's all that mattered. And one day, I found a broken trombone that looked too beaten up to make music anymore. It didn't sound perfect, but finally, with a real instrument in my hand, I was ready to play. The next time the parade went by my house, I grabbed that trombone and headed out into the street. My brother James noticed me playing along and smiled proudly. Trombone shorty, he called out, because the instrument was twice my size. Where yet? From that day on, everyone called me trombone shorty. I took that trombone everywhere. I went and never stopped playing. I was so small that sometimes I fell right over to the ground because it was so heavy. But I always got back up, and I learned to hold it up high. I listened to my brother play songs over and over. I taught myself those songs too. I practiced day and night, and sometimes I fell asleep with my trombone in my hand. I have now learned that his brother James gave him the nickname Trombone Shorty. And as a reader, I also noticed that Trombone Shorty keeps talking about his brother James throughout this story. This signifies to me that as a reader, I have to remember that this is an important relationship and an important person to Trombone's life. One day, my mom surprised me with tickets to New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival the best and biggest musical festival in town. We went to see Bo Diddley, who my mom said was one of the most important musicians of all time. As I watched Bo on stage, I raised my trombone to my lips and started to play along. He stopped his band in the middle of the song and asked the crowd, who's that playing out there? Everyone started pointing, but Bo Diddley couldn't see me because I was the smallest one in the place. So my mom held me up in the air and said, That's my son, Trombone Shorty. Well, Trombone Shorty, come on up here, Bo Diddley said. The crowd passed me overhead until I was standing on the stage next to Bo Diddley himself. I walked right up to the microphone and held my trombone high up in the air, ready to blow. What do you want me to play? What do you want to play? Bo Diddley asked. Follow me, I said. After I played with Bo Diddley, I knew I was ready to have my own band. I got my friends together, and we called ourselves the 5 o'clock band, because that was the time we went out to play, each day after finishing our homework. We played all around New Orleans. I practiced and practiced, and soon my brother James asked me to be in his band. When people wondered who the kid in the band was, he'd proudly say, That's my little brother, Trombone Shorty. Where are you at? And now I have my own band called Trombone Shorty in Orleans Ave, named after a street in Treme. I've played all around the world, but I always come back to New Orleans. And when I'm home, I make sure to keep my eyes on the younger musicians in town and help them out just like my brother did for me. Today,
And now I have my own band called Trombo Shorty and Orleans Ave, named after a street in Treme. I've played all around the world, but I always come back to New Orleans. And when I'm home, I make sure to keep my eyes on the younger musicians in town and help them out, just like my brother did for me. Today, I play at the same New Orleans Jazz Festival where I once played with Bo Diddley. And when the performance ends, I lead a parade of musicians around, just like I used to do in the streets of Treme with my friends. Where yet? Where yet? I still keep my trombone in my hands, and I will never let go. Here is a picture of the real Troy Trombone Shorty Andrews. He started a Trombone Shorty Foundation. And the mission of the Trombone Shorty Foundation is to preserve the rich musical history of New Orleans. The Trombone Shorty Foundation and Tulane University partnered to create the Trombone Shorty Music Academy. This provides music and business education, instruction, and a mentorship experience to New Orleans high school students who are gifted in music. Experienced instructors help young, underserved musicians express themselves and pursue their dreams while also supporting their community. For more information, please visit www.TromboneShortyFoundation.org. We hope you enjoyed this story and hope you continue to reach and follow your dreams. Now that you have read the story, let's talk about it. Trombone Shorty is an autobiography about the life and career of musician Troy Andrews. An autobiography is a true story that is written by the person who experienced the events. What are some details and features of this text that let you know it is a true, real-life story? Summarize the story of Trombone Shorty's early life. Can you identify the theme or message in this story? What details helped you to determine the theme? Now it's your turn to write. Trombone Shorty is an autobiography about the life and career of musician Troy Andrews. The author describes several very special relationships from his childhood, his relationship with his brother James, his relationship with the town of Trim in New Orleans, and his relationship with Bo Diddley. Think about a relationship that is important to you. Write an autobiography to share the details of this relationship. Make sure to include events in a logical sequence. Use dialogue and description to develop the experiences or events. Now it's time to have some fun. You can choose from any of the following activities. Troy Trombone Shorty Andrews tells his own personal story in this book. Write a short essay telling your own story or tell your story to a person in your family or a stuffed animal. You may want to call a relative or even a friend. Brian Collier used collage to illustrate this book and created layered pictures that tell the story of New Orleans. Create a collage that tells a story of where you live.
Music was very important to Trombone Shorty's life. Listen to some of his music and write an essay or create a picture to show how it makes you feel.